Temperament and Developmental Psychology This video will look at temperament and how it relates to developmental psychology. Temperament is defined as individual differences in self-regulation and reactivity that is biologically based and tends to be stable. Reactivity is how excitable response systems are and it is influenced by intensity and time. Self-regulation, on the other hand, is the ability to control these reactions. Differences in temperament can include differences in emotional regulation, biological function, uh, regulation, motor activity, attention span, rhythmicity, or how predictable the infant is, and whether they are approached or withdrawn in orientation to new stimuli. There are three temperament patterns which children are classified in. The first are easy children. They have good sleeping and feeding cycles, uh, meaning that they have good rhythmicity. They also have high adaptability to change and mild intense moods, most of which are usually positive. According to the Australian Temperament Project, or ATP, easy children make up 39% of the sample. In addition, there are slow to warm children, who are relatively inactive compared to the previous group, and have mild uh, intensity in reacting to new stimuli. They have slow adaptability after repeated contact and are at risk of understimulation. According to the ATP, uh, they make up 8%. Difficult children are withdrawn and inhibited to new situations. They have slow adaptability to change, have irregular biological function, and often have intense negative mood. They make up 12% in the ATP. Furthermore, the origins of temperament are debated between uh, the classic nature versus nurture. Nature consisting of grandmother reports and twin studies. These traits are said to be of biological origin and passed by hereditary. Nurture, on the other hand, consists of uh, influences from the prenatal environment, such as exposure to stress, teratogens, or if the baby was born premature, which I covered in previous videos. Also, the style of parenting and caregiving influences the child's temperament. Additionally, cultural background of the parents also influences the way emotions are expressed and what is deemed socially acceptable. The ATP study found that 70 to 80% had very little change in temperament, implying that it is rather stable. Some of the instability may be caused by a change in the underlying expression of constructs as the different stages progress. Caregivers also had a moderate impact on temperament. Plowman et al. found that through twin and adoption studies, the heritability index was between 50 to 60%. Parenting, however, does not have a bi-directional relationship, since the parent may provide certain care as a result of the child's temperament. Other variables also influence parenting and temperament, acting as moderators, for example, uh, the age of the parent or child, their gender, the parent's characteristics and social and cultural factors. Through research, we aim to look at the goodness of fit, or the extent where an individual's capacities, motivations, temperaments, and abilities are matched to environmental demands and expectations caused by the parent or culture. There are methodological challenges, such as parents rating being very subjective, and the parent-teacher mixed reports are used, as well as lab procedures like lab tab. The Laboratory of Assessment of Temperament assesses children's temperament by introducing a stimulus to a child and sees how they react, measuring fear, frustration, sadness, persistence, and excitement. Similarly, effortful control is the use of high-order process of self-regulation and are linked to social competence, 
school readiness, attentional regulation, and learning in general. To test effortful control, there are tasks of delayed gratification that observes whether children will forsake the short term for long term rewards. Being able to delay gratification can help predict academic success, attentional regulation, and persistence, requiring a degree of effortful attention and motor inhibition. The longitudinal study known as uh, Australian Temperament Learning, or ATL, was conducted by Dundine, uh, who stated that preschoolers who have impulsivity or under control predicted poor mental health, suicidality, antisocialness, isolation, criminal activity, substance dependence, and personal financial problems as adults. On the other end of the spectrum, those with high behavioral inhibition have, great, have greater harm avoidance, have social potency, and range higher and lower on positive emotionality. The next famous research is the Longitudinal Study of Australian Children, or LSAC, which found that temperament in preschoolers can predict psychopathology for when they become 12 to 13 years old. It was found that greater reactivity predicted greater chance for ADHD, depression, and, and anxiety. Having high sociability or approach predicted ADHD and conduct disorder, and less approach predicted anxiety. Greater persistence helped predict less ADHD problems. Furthermore, temperaments must be considered in the light of their context. I'm considering again evocative gene environment correlations where genes shape caregivers and peers to react in a certain way to their children, encouraging a specific temperament to develop. There is also active gene environment correlation where the child actively seeks out the environment best suited to their temperament. Parents' uh, perceptions of difficultness in temperament can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, however. Applications of temperamental research include considering protection against risk factors that may cause uh, psychopathology or difficult temperament. Parenting quality has an effect for being overprotective or negligent towards the child's uh, needs, which can negatively influence the child's regulatory strategy and temperament. Parents could be trained to identify the cues behind certain psychopathologies and change the environment in order to allow children to adapt. Finally, co-regulation of self-regulation must be considered for parents have a role to play in controlling and inhibiting the emotions of infants. Through attunement, one can emotionally relate and communicate to infants through facial expression and nonverbal cues, allowing parents to validate, soothe, challenge, encourage, and provide a safe haven for children. Parents also define what emotions uh, the infants have by giving labels and helping them to understand what it is they are feeling. This can help mediate the turbulent times of the terrible twos. In summary, we looked at the characteristics and categorizations of child temperament, the effects of nature and nurture, influential studies such as the ATL, ATP, LSAC. We also looked at the effects of parenting and the applications of this research. Thanks for watching.